I purchased over a dozen of these simple composition notebooks when they were on sale, and I am creating a playlist on how to alter these composition notebooks to create interesting diaries. I want to turn one of them into a notebook for recording holiday memories. Let me tell you who I am. My name is Peg, and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I really like to journal. I like to create diaries. So a lot of what I do is creating the writing journals or the diary journals. I also am enjoying learning encaustic wax. And you'll see a lot of other things on my channel as I experiment with different mediums, different projects, ephemera, etc. If you like that, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to let you know when I upload additional content. These composition notebooks were... I purchased them at 50 cents a piece and picked up a bunch of them. So check out my playlist on each and every one that I've altered. This one is the one we are doing for the holidays. So I chose traditional holiday colors, starting with that crimson red or that bright red. Any red will work. And I'm putting that on my gel press in a nice thin coat. I'm going to top it with a stencil and I'll pull the color out of those open areas on that stencil with a sheet of copy paper. And we'll set that aside to use later in a different project. Because what I want to do for this particular project is use red and gold and green and gold. So I'm gonna allow that to dry to the touch and then lay down a very thin layer of this craft paint. This I'm just using a craft metallic gold paint. Sheet of copy paper. I'm going to allow that to set for a minute. I'm rubbing over the top of it to make sure I have a good connection everywhere on the plate. Then we'll let it set for about 60 seconds before I pull it which you don't get to see the this, this set time um, in the video, but I do want you to know I did let it set for a bit, and there is that first pull. I'm going to do three to four sheets of the red and gold, and then create the same type of impression or the same type of print in the phthalo green and the same metallic gold. Let's get the thin layer of the phthalo green laid down. We'll choose some different stencils. I've used some different stencils throughout. And once again, just making sure I have good contact to pull that paint from those open areas. And that worked quite well. We'll allow that to dry to the touch and then lay down the metallic gold. And you can see right there in the top right of the gel press, see that green coming through? That's because I did not allow that to dry enough. Got a little impatient, but we'll work with it. Get the good connection. And allow that to sit for about 60 seconds at least and then pull that print. And there is the green and the gold. I've done three to four of each, cutting the white edges off of the papers, and then I'm just going to cut them into <clears throat> two inch by three inch, just random size rectangles, squares, because we will be collaging these on the front of the composition notebook. So now that we have them down into those appropriate sizes, I'll just move my scraps off and I'll save those scraps and put them in my bin to make paper. But there is the green and the red, the stack of green and the stack of red. Now the next step is putting them in my embossing folders. 
you don't have to do this, but I wanted a little relief. So off they go. Once into all, I've chosen a bunch of different embossing folders that kind of feel holiday-ish to me. And I ran them through the Big Shot. And you can see there's a nice relief on each of these sheets of paper now. So we'll just unload those from the embossing folder. See the, see the nice detail there? And get it a little closer to the camera so you can see. We'll unload those and add our adhesive to the front of the composition book and begin to lay them down. Now I took a kind of a windy road on how I got the front of this composition book because my first initial thought process was oh, I'll do a red one and I'll do a green one and we'll do both. Then I decided, eh, I just need one. So I'll add the red and the green into the same. I got all the red down. The red looked kind of blase, so I thought I needed to add the green. So it was, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of pondering going on here as, as I put these down. And what I decide to do is once I get all the red down and take a look at how the red looks on its own, I decide to go back and put the green in. Now, did I have to do that? No, it wasn't, it wasn't really necessary. But I think it turned out okay. I think it would have turned out fine if I would have kept it in one single color too, based on what I decided to do with the finished cover. So I know that's a lot of unnecessary information, but I thought it might be interesting to just let you know what the thought process was as, as I got this, put this together. So now I'm going back with the green to add the green in, but to make it look intentional, I had to add an additional layer of red as well. So the front cover of this has two layers of the collage. I probably could have just said that at the very beginning, right? There's just two layers of collage on this and I wouldn't have had to gone through all that other explanation, but you get it. Well, speed this up, collage this down and get to decorating. So stick with me. Now would be a good time to hit that like button and help promote my channel. I always appreciate that. And it does with the YouTube algorithm, all of those thumbs up do help my videos be suggested and shown. And of course, adds to my subscribers and my watch hours. Now, I think we have that corrected and all pieced together. And I want to expose that relief. And I thought a good way to do that would be to add some additional gold. So I pulled out the uh, bronze wax paste and used that. And I got that a little heavy there on the left side of the cover. So I pulled out a baby wipe to try to remove some of that. And 
might as well see the mistakes I made as well as as well as some of the things that I did right. But this this complete project was kind of a a mistake after mistake. But I think in the end it turns out okay. I'll be curious to see your comments. Okay, so I have some of that gold removed, but I still don't feel like the relief is showing as much as I would like it to from putting those sheets of paper into the embossing folders. I just am not feeling like it is showing up as much as I would like for it to. So I'm going to dry this off from using the baby wipe on it to remove some of that gold. And then I am going to come back in with some black ink. Now I think that some of the areas of this black ink have gotten a little heavy. So while I thought that was a great idea to put that black ink down to display the relief, which it effectively does, I think that it slid over and got a little heavy. So back once again with, with the baby wipe and just rubbing a little bit of that off. And now I'm going over to kind of push that black to the back, I brought out my Versamark marker because it dried up, the ink dried up too fast. I brought out the Versamark marker and went over that relief with the Versamark. And now I'm adding some silver embossing powder. And that laid down pretty thick. So I'm pulling out this little fan brush and just brushing some of it off. But I, the whole purpose of the embossing powder at this particular point is to push back that black that I laid down. So let's get that set with the heat gun. And I did this kind of in quarters to start. I wanted to, to see how it would work. And then I wind up covering the whole, the whole front with the embossing powder. And I'm being cautious. I keep hitting my camera. I'm sorry for the uh, little dizzy spell I created here, but There, I think that's going to work to kind of push that, push that black to the back. So that is the plain um, Versamark marker, which is no color in the ink. It's just putting the adhesive or the moisture down to collect the embossing powder. And, you know, in theory, I thought that the only parts of this particular cover that would attract or be covered with the adhesive would be the raised edges. But as you can see, that embossing powder just stuck to everything. So I had to use the little fan brush to come back in and brush some of that embossing powder off. So overall, I think we got it Okay, but I feel like now there is a lot of embossing powder, there's a lot of black, there's just a lot that's distracting on this cover. So I needed a focal point. I took the leftover sheets of green and just cut a triangle out of that sheet and then cut that triangle into strips to create this Christmas tree. Now I need a star for the top of it. So I'm just going to draw that little star we learned to draw in, in grade school from point to point. I'm 
if I can get one that I like. There we go. I'll cut that out and paint it with some gold, that gold me metallic gold paint. And just to keep texture junkies entertained, we'll just use plain old gold. And that was a bit too much. So we certainly have enough paint out to cover that star. So I'm going to paint my star, let it dry, then I will come back with gold um, embossing powder to make that glittery and we'll emboss over the top of that star. And this is brilliant gold embossing powder. To move him off, put that back into the container. Hit that with the heat gun and keep him from moving all over and set that on top of that tree. Let's glue that tree into place. We'll get that. <clears throat> top of the tree down first and then we'll lay down the little gold star. And I want to make sure that the glue is all the way to the edge of the points on the star to avoid it coming up when you run your hand over the top of this because when you have texture, for me, if I have texture on the front of this notebook, I'm going to want to touch it and rub my hand over it. So what I want to avoid is any of the pieces of paper having any loose areas that could come up when I rub my hand over the top of this book. So I have the star down. I'm going to glue the tree into place. Once I have that tree glued into place, I'm coming back in with a graphite pencil and just outlining to create a little shadow, a little definition. So now I think the front of the book is starting to look a little better. Push that black into the background, push the embossing into the background by creating the focal point with the Christmas tree, which wasn't my intention when I first started out making this book. It was just gonna be patchwork of holiday paper. Um, things change as you get started and you <clears throat> make mistakes and try to correct those mistakes and get to the end result of something that, that looks decent. And if I don't like it now, I would just cover the whole thing up again. So I'm trying to decide <clears throat> what I want to do for the spine. And, you know, my first thought was to paint it black cover it maybe with a ribbon, but I decided I have this holiday washi tape. I'll just pull that holiday washi tape out and we'll add the washi tape onto the spine. So I'm choosing which of the holiday prints I like. And I've never used these. I bought them, I think, two years ago. And I've never had them out, never used them. So now would be a good time. I like that one with the Christmas tree. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to put that down and line that up down, down the edge. I do feel like it needs some, 
separation or some space from, from that front. So I'm going to trim it up. And then I think I'll just go with a gold to kind of give that, to give that separation, separation. And there, I think that that will look pretty good. And I want to do that on both sides. And that spine is wide enough that I'm going to have to choose, I will have to choose a third washi to cover that spine, or I could have left it just black. Let's get the trees and the gold down first. So now I think I'm going to choose something that has some red in it for that spine. So I'm looking at this piece and it's really not wide enough. So I'm going to pull out a washi that is a little wider. And I kind of like this metallic stripe going through here. But take a look at what happens with this. That metallic, this is kind of a defective <laughs> roll of washi tape. As you can see, that metallic stripe disappears. But I kind of like the defective part better than the actual. So I'm using that. So let's get that down. And this little composition book is going to go to my daughter who just got married. So I thought this would be a good time for her and her husband to start recording their holiday memories. If they have people over for the holidays, they can have them sign inside here, have them write something inside as they, as their relationship matures and they add children to their relationship they can have the kids put something in each year and it will be fun to keep in your Christmas things and as you pull it out each year <clears throat> go back and read through the previous years so that's my thought process I hope my daughter enjoys that and will do that I will probably make yet another for my other daughter who has a five-year-old and a three-year-old now. And my son's children <clears throat> are a little older. So let's get that glue laid down under that washi tape so this will last throughout the years because as you know that washi tape doesn't have that great of a um, stick to it it's it's a removable tape <clears throat> and we don't want it to remove <clears throat> and as you can hear i'm losing my voice again which means i've been drinking too much coffee because the acid in the coffee is what causes me to lose my voice So there, we are complete with this book, but it's not complete without some dots of liquid pearls. So we're dotting that star and going over that star with some liquid pearls to give it a little bit more dimension. And we will call that finished. And I'll give you a little photo montage of the finished book so you can actually see the back of the book too, because we haven't worked on that back.
thank you for sticking with me as I worked through all the problems on this project. But at the end, I think we got a, a pretty decent result and the playlist for additional altered playing, altered composition notebooks is right here. And I wish to you and yours a very happy holiday.